I'm Marty Stauffer. It's easy to imagine the untamed wildness of the good old days as you listen to a lone coyote sing its ancient song. To some of us, this mournful cry kindles delight and inspiration. To others, dread and hatred. In Indian mythology, the coyote was revered for its cleverness and mystical song. Yet our modern society condemns the coyote for its predatory instinct to kill. Regardless of our mixed emotions, this wild canine has proven itself to be one of the most intelligent and successful of all animals on Earth. With efficient hunting skills, an opportunistic diet, strong social bonds, and an incredible capacity to learn, the coyote can quickly change habits and habitat. Even in the face of adversity, this animal thrives, the controversial coyote. As early pioneers carved a niche in the American landscape, most large predators lost their native habitats, with one exception, the coyote. Even in Yellowstone Park, the wolf is gone, and the coyote reigns as top dog in the ecosystem. Fortunately, Yellowstone escaped the pioneer's axe and remains a land of plenty. For the otter, there's always an abundance of food. And where there's food, this clever canine is not far away. Capable of outwitting almost any animal, the coyote is not above trying to steal the otter's fish. The otter delights in tempting the coyote with its catch of the day. The contest becomes more heated as a fellow opportunist arrives. Crow Indians called it the trickster. Like the trickster, the otter is also a creature of wit and mischief.
but suddenly the otter has more trouble than it bargained for. Snatching the fish from the otter is only one small victory. To win the battle, he must keep it from the other coyotes. Hungry ravens await the scraps. In the end, dominance, not chance, dictates which contender claims the prize. Watching this drama, I understand better how these wily predators have survived against all odds. Yet, intelligence does not always guarantee success. Flexibility in diet and habitat are two key factors in the struggle to survive. Animals that are quick to adapt such as the raven and coyote, are much less vulnerable once the balance of nature is altered. It also helps to have friends in the right places. Coyotes often gaze skyward. Spiraling ravens can lead to carrion or easy prey. As keen as a coyote's sense of smell is, it's not nearly as keen as a raven's eyesight. In turn, the ravens get leftovers from the coyote's kill. Their relationship is symbiotic, meaning that each benefits from the other. Undaunted by defeat, the otter emerges from its steamy playground with yet another catch. This resourceful carnivore is no less a predator than the coyote. And predation may well be the strongest link in the chain of life. Late winter marks the beginning of the mating season. To signal the male that she is reproductively ready, the female paws and bites at his flanks, enticing him to mate. Despite her feminine wiles, something else has captured his interest. For now, he must keep a watchful eye on his food cache. A winter-killed deer whose scent is sure to draw a prowler. Coyotes are very territorial, and this large male has trespassed onto foreign turf. But in the winter, the ache of an empty stomach overrides respect for territorial boundaries. 
He proclaims his presence by urinating and continues to investigate. This pair is not about to surrender the carcass. A fallen deer is a rare commodity during a mild winter. Coyotes usually fare better in harsh weather when their normal diet of carrion is more abundant. The resident male stays close by the female. His possessiveness demonstrates the devotion coyotes show toward their mates. It looks as though the large intruder could easily intimidate the smaller male. Yet a formidable male will act submissive in alien territory. Because he's unfamiliar with the surroundings, his confidence is diminished and he's therefore reluctant to fight. With ownership of the carcass established, the pair returns to the business of courtship. Months of intimate friendship prior to mating help strengthen the pair bond. This loyalty is rarely challenged by other coyotes. A male coyote has a reproductive cycle that coincides with the females. He's actually sterile for eight months of the year. Pups are born in late April or May. By three weeks of age, they begin to investigate their surroundings with ever-growing curiosity and coordination. Evolution made the coyote a creature of our western plains, prairies, and deserts. By clearing forests and exterminating other large carnivores, modern civilization has favored the expansion of the coyote's range from California to New England and Costa Rica to Alaska. It now occupies the niches left vacant by man's elimination of wolves, bears, cougars, and wolverines. The protective mother constantly studies the breeze for any message of approaching danger. Already, some pups are seeking to assert dominance over their litter mates. These rough and tumble games will determine their social status as adults. A highly developed social structure is characteristic of most canines. Before the West was settled, the coyote frequently traveled in packs, like wolves. After centuries of persecution, the coyote found little safety in numbers and adopted a more solitary lifestyle, except in protected refuges and national parks where they occasionally still run in packs. Unlike the wolf, which depends on pack cooperation to bring down large prey, the coyote can pursue smaller prey quite effectively on its own. With this adaptability, 
It's no wonder the coyote has roamed this continent for 55 million years, while so many other animals have become extinct. Ancient records show that the first American natives held this song dog in high regard. Endowed with names such as God's Dog and Old Man Coyote, he played a supreme role in their religion. Perhaps early man felt a spiritual kinship with the coyote because he saw many of his own qualities in this wild dog. Coyotes have not fared as well with modern man. This female has much to teach her pups about a world filled with predator hatred. And learning always has a price. These pups learned the hardest way of all. They were killed in their den, victims of a controversial predator control program. Adults are trapped, poisoned, even shot from the air all on the assumption that reducing their population will protect livestock. Coyotes are especially unpopular with sheep ranchers, who claim to lose large numbers of sheep to coyotes and other predators. As sheep ranching became less profitable over the years, sheep men sought the help of the federal government to control coyote populations. Certainly the most deadly and the least specific method was the use of compound 1080 and strychnine, inserted into meatballs and scattered across public and private rangelands. Poison baited explosive devices called coyote getters were substituted to target coyotes more effectively. Sheep carcasses are also injected with poison and left for scavengers. This method kills off carrion-eating coyotes, while blame-worthy individuals continue to dine on live sheep. Indiscriminate poisoning kills many other species as well. The least humane of all the grim gadgets is the leg hold trap. A coyote will chew off its own foot to escape. Unfortunately, the traps are not selective. Other animals, by the thousands, become victims. The stomach contents of this poisoned coyote included 19 mice and a kangaroo rat. As more and more coyotes are killed in an area, the rodent population explodes. A poisoning program for rodents is sure to follow. This creates more government jobs, but leaves a trail of poison that endangers wildlife and humans alike. A non-lethal, environmentally sound tradition which saves thousands of sheep in Europe is livestock guard dogs. They reduce predation and provide an alternative to lethal methods. These dogs may look sheepish, but coyotes stay away and return to the important task of keeping the rodent population in check. Alive and well, despite ruthless control efforts, the coyote remains the most controversial animal in the history of wildlife management. Most coyotes are more interested in their natural prey, a jackrabbit.
The adults relay one another, using teamwork to exhaust or outwit this long-legged speedster. It's ironic that we tend to root for the underdog, to sympathize with the jackrabbit. As predators ourselves, we should be able to identify more with the coyotes. An immature goshawk joins in, but is not yet ready for such large prey. The coyotes seem to relish the chase, but catching their quarry is not just fun and games. To a predator, 
It's a matter of life and death. Many people believe the coyote's role is that of villain, but nature does not distinguish between villains and victims, only between the successful and the unsuccessful. In a world where survival of the fittest is supreme law, this arch predator will probably outlive most other creatures. In the words of a Crow Indian chief, when the antelope have gone and the buffalo wallows are empty, only the wail of the coyote will be heard. Since our continent was first settled, the coyote has competed with man as a predator of wild animals and livestock. Today, more than ever, the coyote is paying for this competition with its life. Yet the normal food habits of most coyotes are more beneficial than harmful. Their roles in controlling rodent populations and as scavengers are often overlooked in our relentless attempts to exterminate them. There is no doubt that we have the power to destroy our wildlife heritage. The question is, do we have the wisdom to preserve it? Are we clever enough to end this war so that both sides can prosper? Certainly we can find a way to make peace with the controversial coyote. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.